We've officially been at it on Twitter asking, where have you been? Well, um, just to give you a little bit of an update of uh, the situation with uh, Josh and I, uh, we're currently at university. So that's the reason why we haven't been uploading as much as we have been in the past. I mean, um, certainly this year, this whole year has been a crazy year um, for both of us. Uh, and the videos that you've seen from that, you know, we've had lots of spare time uh, from you know, when we started the channel up until about the September time. Uh, but then from then onwards, we uh, we went to university. So um, the videos will be a bit sporadic from time to time, but we will keep you updated on whatever's happening in the market. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of a market update and just go through the top five coins. I will be going through XRP, so don't worry. And, you know, the other reason why we, we haven't uploading much is also because, you know, the market has been pretty stable um in terms of where it's actually been it's been pretty stagnant uh nothing's been really moving much i mean bitcoin just went from you know a few hundred dollars down to a few hundred dollars up in the past few uh months really um so but that that's actually you know it can be good and bad news for that you know good news because uh you know if there's if it's straight line like this look at this this is from the past month right it's a complete flat line i mean you've got a few uh, spikes here and there but it's literally just like a ruler. Um, so the reason by it being that it's good news or bad news is that um, there is going to be some major, major movement from that. Now, whether that's going to be positive or negative. Um, in my eyes, I think it's going to be positive. I think there's a lot of things happening uh, at the moment, certainly with exchange traded funds um, and also regulation as well. The other thing which the market is looking for is regulation. You know, um, as many people don't really like that word, it's a double-edged sword really with when it comes to regulation because we won't see the same amounts of volatility, but at the same time, um, it's actually sort of a safety net for all of us really. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much Bitcoin at the moment. Um, again, just finding out that sort of, you know, a good time to actually get in for that. Um, I would say it's pretty much now, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, but it, I think the lowest it could go before the end of the year would be anything in the $5,000 region um, before we go up into the uh, five-figure territory. And we haven't been in five-figure territory for quite some time now. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens with Bitcoin. Um, and the market cap itself, we're at $208 billion, uh, And that's been going up and down you know, pretty not so well in the last few weeks i mean we have seen there was like a massive surge uh not massive but sort of a somewhat surge of of some form with xrp earlier on but you look at the last month as well for uh the total market capitalization here it's a straight line as well with a few blips here and there so um again this this is also a good and bad thing good thing because it could be a good price or bad thing because it could be a bad price in my eyes i think it's pretty much upwards from here i think there is going to be a bit of a uh, uh, some corrections along the way, uh, but it's pretty much going to be along the way there. So the next one I have for you is Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has been taking a bit of a beating this year. Um, you know, look at it. It's at $200 at the moment. Now, the reason being is because last year was just a massive year for crypto. You know, everyone was going into crypto. Um, I went into crypto. Uh, Josh went into crypto. Literally everyone was in crypto. And um, that also meant that there was a lot of ICOs as well. Um, and then with that, the ICOs were accepting Ethereum and, um, you know, there was millions and millions and tens of billions of, of dollars being flooded into Ethereum. That's why we saw that massive price surge in Ethereum. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these companies, these ICO companies, some of them real, some of them not real, started just dumping their Ethereum onto exchanges. And that's why we've seen just a massive beating for Ethereum. Now, the technology in Ethereum is brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, it does have a lot going for it. Um, but we will need to see something positive from Ethereum, you know, something that will really kickstart the price, really, you know, um, fan the flames a bit uh, from Ethereum to really see something really good positive out of this. Um, so that's pretty much my thoughts on Ethereum at the moment. Again, just leave me um, leave me a comment below uh, and tell me what you think about Ethereum at the moment. The next one, the next one is XRP. Now, um, XRP, it is my favorite crypto, as many of you probably know by now. Um, I'm still sticking to my end of year prediction of anywhere between three to six dollars um, because of, you know, the whole idea of a bull market at the end of the year. Everyone goes home for Christmas, that sort of holiday season. Uh, they will start talking about it again. 
Um, and I do think it's probable that uh, in the December to January time that we'll see anywhere of three to six dollars for a short period of time. There'll probably be a bit of correction like last year, um, but that's sort of where my prediction is at for XRP. Now I've got an interesting statistic here for you, or just sort of a, an interesting tweet. I'll bring it up on the screen right now. It says here that for those laughing at the price predictions for you know five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for XRP predictions, um, Bitcoin used to be at zero point zero zero three cent uh, of you know of a dollar, right? Uh, so what are you laughing about exactly? Uh, and Bitcoin is used for nothing but trading on exchanges. XRP is about to be used by hundreds of thousands of banks and financial institutions. And that's a key thing, you know. Um, Bitcoin, yes, it's like gold; it's a good store of value. Um, and it, you know, it's sort of a, a riskier side of investing when it comes to you know, are you going to invest in gold or are you going to invest in Bitcoin? Now, Bitcoin does have a bit more of a, a volatility to it, um, but at the same time, what's Bitcoin actually going to be used for? You know, you can make transactions. I'm sure you can, you know, um, purchase a car, purchase a house uh, with Bitcoin, but that's pretty much it. I mean, we we would need to see something else for Bitcoin to actually see it actually you know go up a bit, but. With XRP, it is something different. You know, they are actually working with the regulators. They're working with the financial institutions. They're working with the governments. And for many people out there that disagree with that idea of, you know, centralization and decentralization and, you know, working with, you know, sort of some people see, you know, the government and regulation as a bad thing for crypto. In my eyes, I think it's actually a good thing because it will see some stability, uh, a bit of regulation, because um, at the moment, the, you know, the whole cryptocurrency market is like the wild west so that's pretty much it for xrp uh, do watch this space for xrp um, i'm gonna be making some more videos on xrp in the future uh, because there's just a lot to talk about with xrp the next one i have you is bitcoin cash and that's been up by 13 nearly 14 percent today uh, and that's because of um, Coinbase doing their stuff again. It says here uh, on November 2nd, CCN reported that Bitcoin.com and Binance decided to support the version of Bitcoin Cash set forth by ABC, the original developers of the Bitcoin Cash software uh, that fought the Bitcoin blockchain network last year. So and that's pretty much the reason why we had the price surge in Bitcoin Cash. I don't really follow Bitcoin Cash. Um, it's a hard fork again. Um, and we'll just see what happens with, with Bitcoin Cash. You know, they, they have lower transaction fees. It's a bit faster in some ways. So uh, it be interesting to see what happens with Bitcoin Cash. And EOS, uh, I'd say, well, I don't really follow EOS as well. Only because there was a statistic I read somewhere. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. But, you know, like a lot of the uh, actual total supply of EOS is held by the creators, the original founders. Um, and that's actually my last point I'm gonna give you and leave you with you uh, on this video is that um, it's also been reported that like 76% of Bitcoin is controlled by um, people in China uh, or you know people within China. Um, now, my question is what happens if or when the Chinese government say, okay, since most of the Bitcoin is in our country, we're therefore going to get hold of that Bitcoin and we're going to do whatever we want to do, you know, to do with it. Um, that's only my question. That's my thought. Um, it's not finalized just yet, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment. What's going to happen? What would happen, you know, if uh, a country like China thought that, hmm, okay, most of the Bitcoin, which seems to be pretty uh, profitable for other people in the world, um, has actually worked well for them. It might work, work, work well for us. So um, that's really the thought I'm going to leave with you today. Um, and then again, again with the XRP, I still stick by my prediction of three to six dollars by the end of the year, and also I'll give you a little market cap prediction as well. Um, I do see it's hopefully going to be above uh, 500 uh, million, uh, sorry, 500 billion. Um, I think at this point it would be hard to reach one trillion dollar market cap. Um, we would have to see a massive surge. Um, but anything is possible in the crypto space. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. Bitcoin dominance is still above 50%. So uh, it'd be interesting to see where that other, you know, if that 50% went below, you know, what would happen? Where would all that uh, money go into? So it's a lot to play for, a lot to happen. Um, you know, Tether took a bit of a heating uh, the other day. So, you know, it, again, even though it's stagnant at the moment, even though it's completely sideways at the moment with Bitcoin, with the whole market cap at the moment, there is still a lot of interesting stuff happening at the moment. And that's pretty much the you know the crux of my video that I'm going to give to you today is 
you know, even if it's sideways, there's still interesting stuff happening and there's still a lot of interesting stuff and stuff happening in the future. So just watch the space and stay subscribed to Crypto Busy. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Crypto Busy. Uh, we also have a Patreon, so do make sure to check out our Patreon. Um, we also uh, have a Telegram as well, so do make sure to check out our Telegrams, Crypto Busy T and Crypto Busy TG. And uh, that's pretty much it from, uh, from me in this video. Um, I will be posting more in the future. You know, I am at university at the moment, so um, hopefully we can do something like a weekly thing uh, or maybe like uh, two videos or maybe three videos a week, something like that. Um, you know, we do like to keep you guys up to date with these sort of things. So, um, yeah, a lot of interesting stuff happening at the moment. And uh, yeah, just comment below what your thoughts are on uh, cryptocurrencies at the moment. We'd love to, uh, love to hear what you, uh, what you guys are thinking at the moment and we'll be responding to some of the comments as well. So that's it from me and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.